Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's all fantastic and wonderful. Everything here is good. Monday, I talked a good bit about M and our relationship and I said that I had something I wanted to talk about and I needed to figure out a way to talk about it. Uh, and M and I discussed it and I think I can do that. So let's do that now. And what I want to say is, I, I, I mentioned that M and I have a pretty significant age gap. Uh, M is 17 years younger than me. And being in a relationship with an age gap like that comes with, you know, a lot of considerations. Uh, for one, just life goal considerations. What The life goals of a, of a 20-something versus a 40-something are, are probably pretty different. I have kids. Um, my oldest is not that much younger, you know, and... and those, those all come with a whole slew of problems, and, and if you want to ask any questions about that, please feel free to put it in the comments and I'll answer, but we thought long and hard and talked a lot about our age gap and talked a lot about what that meant to us, uh, what that might mean to our families. We talked all these things out before we ever, like, told our families, right? And that's important, but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the power dynamic that comes when there's an age gap like that. Um, because it's something that I think maybe some people are aware of, but also I think there's a fair bit of naivete on the part of especially older men when it comes to being in a relationship with a younger female. I'm not saying this does not apply to same-sex couples or, you know, transgender, whatever. It applies to everybody, but specifically because I realized when Em and I started this relationship that I became like a statistic, you know, the 40-year-old the divorcee with the young 20-something, you know, that's just a, like the, it's, it, at this point, it's a trope, right? It's just a, oh, yeah, you know he left me for a 20 something or whatever. That's just, everybody knows that's a thing. And it just happened, right? And this was not something that I was seeking out. It is not something I don't think M was seeking out. Um, we, we met at work. We became friends. We talked about life and stuff. We found out we both love books. We both love video games. We mentioned, you know, I was single, you know, trying to figure out my way because the kids had moved out the year before. She was getting over a relationship. We just started hanging out, playing video games and talking. And uh, it just kind of, you know, developed from there. It was not something that either of us were out looking for. I wasn't out looking for a young female to, you know, whatever. The point, though, is once it started to become obvious that this was going to be a relationship, it became very important for me as the older male in this relationship to be positive that M had agency in the relationship. That's the problem, right? That's when things get a little bit dicey. And like I said, there is, I have personally seen naivete on the, on the part of the older male in this scenario who thinks that because the younger partner uh, went along with that person's ideas that they had agency. That's not necessarily the case, right? You need to really think hard about that. Are you, you know, is the older partner in this relationship dominating the relationship? Is the older partner making all of the suggestions and the younger partner is going along with it? Because that is a very common scenario. And in the end, in the future, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be next year, it might be years down the line when the younger partner realizes that they have had no agency in this relationship because they've constantly gone with the, quote, wisdom or the, pre you know, they've just caved. And the older person wasn't even aware. The older person assumed that the younger person had agency. And that's very dangerous. It's a very, very dangerous situation. Now, Part of the reason why this works with M and I is because M is a very, very strong-willed, level-headed person, and she is not going to let me walk all over her. She is not going to let me dominate the relationship. And I made sure we had that talk. We've had this same talk years ago, uh, and then we just had it the other night 
when we were on our date night. And I, you know, she said she was excited to hear what I had to say. And I was like, I don't, it's not really about you. It's just about this age gap because this is a concern. I have seen in the board game industry, a lot of these relationships where older male finds younger female and the power balance there is way out because the younger female is trying to make it in the industry. The older male is already established. There's That's already a problem. It's already like, I don't want to say a subordinate issue, but it kind of is, you know, and it can cause a whole lot of problems. And it's something that, you know, regardless of whether you think you're in a dominating relationship like that, if you're the dominator or the dominatee, regardless of whether you feel like you guys work great together, you need to have that talk because you might be blindsided. You might realize that you are, you know, you're not, you don't have, uh, you have dominated or you are being dominated by an older person. And that's a problem. Um, I think that's something that I think a lot about with my children. My children are, are now seeing this this dynamic. They're seeing me as the older dad dating this young uh, this younger person, and I think they get to see. Uh, I try really hard for them to see that I am not quote in control, right? That when we make decisions, when M and I make decisions, M and I are making those decisions together. Both of our inputs are valid, and I make sure my children see that because, you know, they're both young. They're going to be in these types of situations in the future. Probably not this big of a gap, but, you know, I, I don't know where they're going to be, right? And I want them to understand that regardless, e even without the age gap, this is just basic, like, relationship stuff, right? This is basic just decency when it comes to being in a relationship with somebody is making sure that that person has agency in the relationship, making sure that person has agency in their own life, making sure you're not taking things away from them uh, because of the relationship. Granted, everybody has to give up something to be a part of a relationship like that. You know, I had to give up some of my autonomy, so did M, so that we could start to be a little bit more of a, of a, a team. Uh, but that's normal. It's not normal when you're giving up more of yourself uh, because that can be a little bit weird. But, you know, I think the, the age gap thing is, um, it's challenging. It really is. Uh, we've had to have a lot of those conversations with family and friends. We've had to have um, a lot of those conversations with ourselves. Like I said earlier, we, we really talked all this out and made sure that we were both on board with it. Um, you know, we have some examples in our lives of of age gap relationships. My sister is 14 years younger than her husband. Um, and has some family that are 12 or 13 years apart. Uh, so it it's not as uncommon as you think. Um, but it it you know it, it's still a challenge. It's still very much a challenge. Um, and the cool part is I've really enjoyed going through this challenge with her. I've really enjoyed being a part of it. I did not expect to ever find myself in a relationship with a younger female. I've always been more attracted to older females. But like I said earlier, M has this very commanding presence. And I think that's what I really liked about older females was I was looking for somebody who had a level head and knew this is what I want. I'm going to achieve that as opposed to the dreamy kind of, um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like I'm being negative, but that kind of aloof dreaminess that comes with youth. I didn't, I don't like that. Um, the good news is M doesn't have any of that. <laughs> She's a very grounded, um, rock solid person, which makes us work, uh, or which, I shouldn't say makes us work, which helps us work. Uh, we work really well together. But anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. I hope that, um, you know, that, again, if you, ha if you didn't know, the reason this show exists is, is, is a form of a, a diary of dad for my children. Someday to be able to look at it and go, this is all my dad's thoughts. And one day they might stumble across this. You know, I don't think they watch all my videos. But hopefully there's some advice because... Um, 
regardless of the age gap. Maintaining agency is very important for any relationship. And um, the age gap just compounds things, makes it a little bit more difficult. That's what I have for you today. We are snowed in. We got about eight inches of snow last night. We're not really snowed in. I just don't feel like going anywhere. So I'm cooking in the crock pot and working from home and all that sort of stuff. But uh, probably going to do a lot of staying in this weekend as well. What are you going to be up to? Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again Monday. Today's word you should know to sound smart is juggernaut. It is a noun meaning a large, overpowering, destructive force. Once he began arguing about the superiority of Maseratis, Jefferson becomes a juggernaut capable of deflating anyone else's arguments. Juggernaut. J-U-G-G-E-R-N-A-U-T. Not just a comic book character. Uh, it's a good word, though. <laughs>